Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. As you know by now, I am really obsessed by hardware acceleration for transformer models. And yesterday, AWS Inferentia 2 became generally available. Uh, Inferentia is a custom chip designed by AWS to speed up inference. Yes, you guessed it. And in a previous video, I showed you how to speed up transformers on the first generation. And now, obviously, we want to take a look at the second generation of Inferentia chips. And I'm actually going to run the same example so that we can get a sense of how much faster Inferentia 2 is compared to Inferentia 1. And uh, I'll pinpoint a couple of SDK changes, but really moving the code from uh, Inferentia 1 to Inferentia 2 was really very simple. Okay, let's get started. As usual, I would encourage you to take a look at the product page to learn a little bit more about Inferentia 2 um, and see what uh, sizes are available. So uh, we have X large with a single accelerator, at Excel with a single accelerator and more memory, and 24XL and 48XL with uh, more accelerators and even more memory. So these are the these are the sizes. Uh, we'll talk about pricing also in the video. I think pricing is is very aggressive and and very competitive. Another page you absolutely want to look at is of course the um, the SDK page. Um, you probably know the AWS SDK for Inferentia and and Trainium is called the Neuron SDK. And so uh, obviously go and and check out the tutorials and the documentation. Uh, for um, uh, for Inferentia 2 there. And there's another super useful page on the architecture. And uh, and so you can see the differences between the um, Inferentia 1 architecture and the Neuron Cores V1 uh, versus, of course, the Inferentia 2 architecture and Neuron Core V2. Okay, so a very, very different architecture. Actually, the Inferentia 2 architecture is uh, very close to the Trainium uh, architecture. So that's that's a very interesting move. Okay, so you can go and read all about it and and understand you know what those cores are um, and how they work. Right, and by default, um, those cores will uh, optimize the models for BF16. Okay, uh, which is a an interesting format. Okay, but yeah. Just go and read all of that stuff and you'll learn everything you need to know. Let's just jump to the to the code now, right? Here I'm using an inf2 xlarge instance. Uh, so the smallest one with just one inferential chip and two cores. And we can see the cores here. Okay. Um, and I am using a deep learning AMI built by uh, AWS. And this one is really convenient because it provides a built-in environment for uh, everything, really. Uh, you may remember in my previous video, I complained about having to set up quite a few things. Um, and well, uh, good job AWS on simplifying this. So now the only thing I need to do is really activate this environment. And if I list the packages there, I'm going to see, obviously, the you know PyTorch 1.13.1 and the Torch Neuron X package, um, which is the one we need for Inferentia 2. Um, for Inferentia 1, we use Torch Neuron. So that's part of the of the changes we'll need to do in the code, just fix the the import. Uh, we have the transformers library. Thank you. And generally we have everything we need. Okay. So now we can just go and uh, run my code. Okay, so here we have two examples, uh, which actually come from the, the Neuron um, documentation. Uh, just tweak them a little bit uh, for readability. There's one for uh, BERT uh, on the MRPC task, uh, and I split compula model compilation and model testing. And then there's a, a, a version of BERT that I actually fine-tuned on the Yelp review data set. Um, and that, uh, that's a multi-class classification data set. 
scoring reviews uh, from one to five stars, pretty much. So a five class classification model, okay? And here as well, I split it for training, uh, compilation and testing, okay? So it, it's all super simple. Again, link to that code in the video description. So let's take a quick look at the, uh, the first example, the compilation example. And honestly, um, it's almost identical to the inferential one example. I just had to fix the import here. Um, and yes, it's not called torch dot neuron X. It's called torch underscore neuron X. I had to do that mistake. So now you can avoid it. And the rest is really the same. So here we're going to, uh, we're going to use a, a pre-trained BERT model for, um, um, so on the MRPC task, which means, um, uh, finding uh, if uh, two sentences have the same meaning or not. Okay, so we have three uh, sample sentences, right? Uh, so we encode um, uh, the two um, the two sentence pairs that we're building, the two sentences that are similar and the two sentences that are not similar. Okay. Then we run on the the vanilla CPU model to see what the prediction looks like, print the logits so that we can compare them to the, to the neuron uh, logits and just compile the model in this one line of code, torch neuron X dot trace with the model and uh, a sample input. Okay. And then we simply save the model. So as you can see, if you have existing, uh, existing hugging face code or PyTorch code, it is super straightforward. Um, you just need to import the Torch Neuronex package, trace it, save it, and as we say, voila, uh, you have a neuron optimized model. Okay, very cool. So, uh, so let's just run this. So, okay, here we see our uh, vanilla logits for the uh, the CPU model, and then we just optimize the model for neuron, which should take um, just a few just a few seconds, right? And so this will be um, this will be compiled with um, with a fixed um, uh, sequence length, which is the the sequence length of your sample input. Okay, um, so obviously um, that's that helps a lot with uh, optimization. So um, so you can you can always use padding, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but if uh, all of a sudden you you want to predict, let's say, two fifty six token sequences instead of 128, you need to recompile the model for that. Okay, but as you as you see here, it really only takes a few seconds. So now I've saved my model, right? And now uh, we can take a look at the testing part. Okay, uh, which is super simple as well. So we need to import to import <laughs> the torch neuron x package again although it's not explicitly used in the example but it will bring all the uh, all the neuron related objects that uh, that fit within pytorch okay so don't forget that because if you if you just import torch you're going to get some some weird errors so you do need to have this package here uh, the rest is very similar so we load the model back um, we need to put those samples in torch script format. So that's not neuron specific. It's just for any kind of torch script model. Okay. And then we predict the, the paraphrase example and then and the non paraphrase example. We print the logits, right? So that we can compare them. And, and so that shows us that the model works. Okay. So let's just try this. Okay. And obviously, you know, it is important to check that the compile model predicts uh, predicts the same way as the vanilla model. Here, I'm, I'm running just a simple example, but um, you would need to not only score the compile model again on whatever metric makes sense for the use case, you would really need to check the, the distribution of, uh, of logits as well to see that, um, you know, you, you really, really get very similar results. So we can, hopefully we still have the ones here, so let's look at the first example. So the first example was minus 
1.3495 and 1.904. And yeah, we get point minus 0.3497 and 1.8996. Okay, so super close, but still, you know, not identical. So please run your test and make sure the compiled model behaves the same. Okay, so we can see this works. The compilation process is extremely simple uh, and the model behaves the same way. So now, of course, we want to run um, a benchmark, right? And in this example, I'm actually loading a model that I uh, uh, trained on Trainium in another video. So, and I didn't push it to the hub. So, um, so this one I'm actually loading um, from the from the the model artifact directly. Okay, but it doesn't make any difference. You, you could you could pull the model from the hub, right? So here I'm treating a config for the model. Uh, it's a BERT for a sequence classification model, loading it um, and loading the, the state dictionary. Okay. Yeah. Just, I guess, uh, an example of how to load a, a PyTorch transformer into, um, into a hugging face model. Could be useful. Okay. So then we have some inputs. We tokenize them, put them in Torch script format. We predict with the um, with the vanilla model, print the logits. Okay, um, and then um, yeah, print some more stuff. And then we convert this model for a neuron. Okay, so I will. Um, this actually doesn't make a difference here, but just as a reminder, I am. Uh, I am going to use inf2 x large, okay, with two neuron cores, okay? Just uh, trace the model like this and save it, okay? So really pretty much the same thing we did with the previous example, except this time we're loading uh, the, the PyTorch model from disk instead of loading from the hub, okay? So now we have a neuron optimized model and we can go and test it. Okay, so starting from my uh, same examples, preparing them in the same exact way, loading the neuron optimized model, okay, uh, predicting with the neuron optimized model, printing out log its, etc. Again, this helps me see that I'm not getting anything that's uh, significantly different from the vanilla model, okay. Um, all right, so that's really similar to what we did with the previous example, but now we're going to run a benchmark. Okay, so to do this, um, we need this benchmarking function, which is actually very handy. And again, that all came from the uh, the sample notebooks in the um, in the Neuron SDK documentation. So yeah, you should definitely reuse it. So uh, it's it takes um, it takes uh, a file name, which is the name of the model to load. It takes a sample input and then how many models and how many threads to use for prediction. I'll get back to that in a second. And how many batches do we want to run for each thread? How many batch predictions? Okay. So here uh, we have two neuron cores. So we're actually going to load two copies of the model, right? And each copy of the model will uh, actually predict on one of the neuron cores. And this is quite different from the, uh, the uh, inferential two architecture, where you actually loaded the model once because at compilation time, you had optimized it for the exact number of cores that the, um, that the uh, instance would have, right? So I think the, the, the V2 behavior is more flexible because you can compile the model once and then you can deploy the same model on whatever inferential two instance you want to use, uh, because uh, it will it will just work, right? Uh, you just load as many models ha as you have neuron cores, and it will work. No need to recompile the model for the actual number of cores. So that's a nice improvement. Okay, so we load the models, and then um, we create uh, a couple of prediction threads that will uh, iterate over our sample input. And we store all the prediction times and we compute the P50, P95, and P99 um, uh, percentiles, okay? 
and then we print some results. So that's a really cool function. I'm going to steal this one again and again and again. Okay, so, uh, and how did we actually run this? So yeah, benchmark, name of the compiled model, a sample input. And here I'm running 10,000 um, 10, predictions uh, per thread. So I'm going to run 20,000 total, right? Which should be enough for uh <laughs> to get a sense of how fast this is okay and uh and batch size uh batch size in this example is one okay so we'll see predictions for the uh for the model just to see that this thing works yep and we can compare to the to the vanilla logit and we'll we'd see the same thing and in another window yes we see that stuff happening now uh, i'm using neuron top and we can see the two cores are crunching at my uh, 20,000 samples, right? Oh, it's already over. Wow, that was quite fast. Okay, took 11 seconds. And I can see the throughput is close to 1,700 inferences per second. And P50 latency is 1.15 milliseconds. And P99 latency is 1.36 milliseconds right. so now what about inferentia one so i actually pulled my uh my old video on inferentia one hopefully you can see this stuff here on the screen here uh, in this example i i used an inf one six xl uh, instance uh which uh which actually came with 16 neuron v1 cores so that's probably difficult to compare, uh, you know, V1 cores versus V2 cores. Um, I think this one is an okay reference point because it is about the same. It's just a little bit more expensive than the inferentia to um, instance I'm using. So, you know, I guess from a cost performance point of view, it's probably the best way to, to compare inf1 to inf2. And as you can see here, I had higher throughput, but I had more cores. So that's probably hard to compare. But latency uh, was uh, over 2x higher, right? 3.1 versus 1.4, let's say. Okay, so this goes to show um, inf2 is much, much faster. And, um, and as you can see, I get... Um, let's say 1700 inferences per second with two cores when I only got you know 4000 with 16 cores so it's a massive jump in, in scalability I think right so, so what about longer sequence sizes uh, well I just copy pasted some numbers that I uh, measured earlier today um, so the the example we just saw uses a very short sequence length of 12 okay so I bumped it to, um, you know, I just concatenated the same sentence again and again. So with 176 tokens, we get um, uh, we get throughput of 652, latency 355. If we double that again, um, throughput is kind of is divided by two, and latency is 619. Okay, milliseconds still. And if I go to the max length, uh, the max sequence length of the model or close enough, it's 512, but you know, my sentence only got to 508. Um, I get over 200 predictions per second and I'm still under 10 millisecond latency. So these are really good numbers. Uh, we can see some, you know, again, some good scalability on, um, on throughput and latency as uh, even with very, very large sequence length. Okay, so go and, and run your own numbers. But yeah, this is the, the quick and dirty evaluation I, I did this morning. So I'm, I'm, I guess I'm pretty happy with that. And um, what about cost? Well, let's talk about cost. Of course, we can see the pricing on the, on the EC2 pricing page. And I see my INF2XL instance costs uh, 76 cents on-demand price in the US East 1 region. Again, we can see the pricing for the larger instances. Uh, I think this is very competitive. If we compare this to, let's say, G5, you can see the smallest G5, which actually has the same number of vCPUs and the same memory, 
uh, is uh, is just a little more than a dollar. So um, so that's that's pretty cool. And um, and now of course I want to do a benchmark of uh, inf two versus g five to see uh, which one is fastest. Although I'm pretty sure of the results, but still we need to check. And as always, uh, you know, who wants to pay on demand price? So I actually fired up this instance as a spot instance. And uh, well, thank you AWS for a 70% discount, meaning that uh, my uh, $0.76 has now become something like 0.26 uh, or something. So 26 cents, which is honestly dirt cheap. For this kind of computing power, uh, especially compared to um, to GPU instances, which are generally a little difficult to get um, um, with the spot. Okay, so there you go. Uh, you can run um, you can run short sequences with BERT in about one millisecond for twenty six cents an hour, and let's say up to ten milliseconds. For longer sequences i think that's pretty cool right but i will do that g5 benchmark i know um how you how much you love them and they always they always make me new friends so um, i can always use more friends so of course i'll do the benchmark okay enough stupidity uh welcome inferentia 2 uh it's a killer chip and uh i can see uh, a lot more videos on this and hopefully a lot more usage so, uh, well, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you today. So have fun, uh, run those examples, try and compile your own models, try your own things, and let me know how you're doing, okay? Until next time, keep rocking.